With the arrival of the new millennium, the Russian Federation focused on replacing its Soviet aircraft with new, more powerful examples. Based on the Su-27 and MiG-29 fighters, the Sukhoi Design Bureau developed an aircraft that they say will propel the Russian Air Force into the future. Thus was born the Sukhoi Su-57, an air superiority fighter with stealth technology, which represents the greatest advance in this matter in the history of Russia. Unveiled in 2020, the Su-57 is intended to be a direct competitor to the North American F-35 Lightning II, although it is also often pitted against the impressive F-22 Raptor, considered the best stealth fighter ever created. But, will the Russian aircraft be up to its American rivals? Join us in a new episode of Military Aviation to find out. Fans of combat aircraft will know that, in recent years, the air forces of the first world countries only have eyes for fighters with stealth capabilities. Although this technique is not fully developed, military industries have been working on it for decades. Originally this technology was applied to bomber aircraft traveling at high altitudes, which made it easier for the stealth design to work. Over the years, engineers were also encouraged to create fighters with the ability to evade radar, satellites and other devices to intercept aircraft. The first to achieve mass production were the Americans. Its crown jewel is the expensive F-22 Raptor, considered by many experts to be the ultimate stealth fighter. Over time, the F-35 Lightning II also arrived, a cheaper option but just as powerful. In a short time, the United States managed to gain an impressive advantage in terms of stealth fighter aircraft. It was a matter of time before the Kremlin got to work to catch up. The Russian Federation, listed in the world rankings as the second largest air force on the planet, could not sit idly by while its number one enemy stocked up on fifth-generation aircraft. But to move forward, Russia first had to look to its past. The genesis of the Sukhoi Su-57 began in the former Soviet Union. In 1979, a program called I-90 was launched, which sought to develop a new generation aircraft whose entry into service was scheduled for the year 2000. The intention was for this unit to fulfill a versatile role, suitable for the conditions of modern warfare. The fall of the Soviet regime put an end to this project, but not to the Kremlin's enthusiasm for a new combat aircraft. The I-90 was replaced by the PAC-FA program, which stands for Future Frontline Aviation System. Quite an eloquent name. In 2002 a contest was held to decide which company would be in charge of this new project. Finally, the legendary Sukhoi was the winner, leaving behind heavyweight competitors like McCoyan. The design itself began only in 2010, when Russia established bilateral agreements with India to cover the cost of the project as a whole. The total amount was $12,000 million that were contributed equally between both countries. The new millennium, along with the rapid development of stealth technology, completely changed the rules of the game. The necessities of modern warfare left even the most futuristic Soviet dreams far behind. To make the task easier, Sukhoi based on two pre-existing aircraft, the Su-27 and the MiG-29. While these two heavy fighters are huge, the Russians are known to love planes that look like flying tanks. One of the most impressive details of the Su-57 is its arrow-shaped wings, which differentiate it from previous models such as the Su-35. But it's not just an aesthetic decision, that design contributes to the aircraft's impressive stealth capabilities. We'll delve into this later. Let's first see how big this flying beast is. The Su-57 has a length of 22 meters, a wingspan of 14.2 meters and a height of 6.05 meters. In each of its dimensions, it exceeds any American aircraft by at least 1 meter, and, in length, by up to 4 meters. In principle this is a problem as a larger target is easier to shoot down. But at the same time, having this towering flying machine chase you down in a dogfight must be terrifying. Do you think that the large size of this fighter can have an influence on the psychology of the enemies? Leave your opinion in the comments. Its power plant is made up of two Saturn Lielka AL41F2 turbofan engines, 
which provide the necessary energy to reach a maximum speed of 2,300 km per hour. Its flight ceiling is 20,000 meters, while its empty weight is 35,000 kg, with a payload of 10,000 kg. Its ferry range is 5,500 km and its operational radius is estimated to be half that distance. While the physical characteristics were clearly inherited from its massive Soviet grandparents, the Su-57's design placed particular emphasis on avionics, targeting systems, and stealth capability. Regarding aiming, like most current aircraft, the cockpit has a fully integrated system that can receive all kinds of useful information for the pilot through a data link system. The onboard computer will process everything it deems relevant and send it directly to the helmet's visor, which uses head-up display technology to show all the necessary data. Aiming works the same way, the pilot will be aware of the behavior of all ship systems without having to lose sight of his target. As for its avionics, the Su-57 integrates the GLONASS satellite navigation system in addition to the fly-by-wire, which allows the aircraft to be piloted with electronic controls. A novelty is the OEPS-27 optical sighting system, which works passively or silent, that is, without generating any type of trace, and was integrated to improve the stealth capacity of the ship. How effective the Su-57 is in a real combat situation remains to be seen, but on paper its stealth capability looks impressive. The materials used are low-density alloys, ideal for reducing the radar footprint at long distances. On the other hand, the plane's design also responds to these needs, and its slight resemblance to the North American F-22 Raptor has caused more than one suspicion of influence and even copying within the design. The fact that the Su-57 is Russia's first stealth-capable fighter doesn't help the Sukhoi engineer's alibi. In addition to 10 hardpoints prepared to carry the Vimpeler 33 air-to-air missiles, all tests with this new and potentially invisible Predator have been successful. Despite production delays, the Russian Federation is expected to start mass production of the Su-57 in the near future. A Soviet dream materialized in the XXI century. Invisible, deadly, and effective. Those are just a few of the adjectives often used to describe the F-35 Lightning II, a controversial aircraft that is shaping up to be the future of American aviation. It is the most widespread and used fifth-generation model on the planet, but while it is undetectable by radar, it is also vulnerable to criticism. This Lightning arouses passions both for and against, and, to better understand what it is about, in this new military aviation video we'll go through its engineering and history in depth. Behind every great combat unit is a long development process to turn a bunch of metals and circuits into a destructive machine. Today is the time to meet the F-35, the great American promise. The history of the F-35 dates back to the early 1990s when DARPA, an agency specializing in innovative military projects, laid out the groundwork for the development of a stealth fighter aircraft that would replace all light and ground attack aircraft in service. Finally, $750 million and 10 years later, Lockheed Martin was presented as the winner of the contest with its X-35 project, the first incarnation of the F-35. Huge production costs, delays and impressive technical qualities would become constant elements in the life of the Lightning II. The F-35 is a fifth-generation single-seat aircraft that has several differences from the F-22 Raptor, the other great American fighter aircraft. The Lightning II is smaller, more conventional, and has a single engine. To give you a more precise idea, the F-35 is 15.6 meters long and has a wingspan of 10.7 meters, which is considerably less than the Raptor's 19 meters in length and 13.5 meters in wingspan. Listing the qualities of the F-35 we find that it is neither the fastest nor the best armed aircraft in service. With a maximum operational speed of 1,900 km per hour or Mach 1.6, 
it is well behind units such as the Chinese J-20 or the Russian Su-57, the latter being capable of reaching Mach 2 at cruising speed. The main advantage of the F-35 is its stealth and detection technology. Like an experienced hunter, the Lightning II will find you before you know it's near. That powerful detection system remains the ace up the sleeve of this aircraft and its main difference from the competition. The F-35 suite of sensors and communications equipment is intended to provide situational awareness, control, and electronic warfare capabilities to take down enemy attacks and take unknown communications offline. The main sensor aboard the F-35 is its ANAP-81 active electronically scanned array radar, designed by Northrop Grumman. The radar is accompanied by a Lockheed Martin electro-optical target designation system, capable of marking numerous enemies simultaneously. It is mounted under the nose of the aircraft and provides the same capabilities as other targeting systems, but retains stealth properties. The F-35 has six additional passive infrared sensors distributed throughout the aircraft as part of the system that acts as missile approach warning, reports launch sites and detects approaching aircraft. As if that weren't enough, it also replaces traditional night vision goggles, allowing the ship to operate missions at night. The F-35 sensors have been designed and integrated to provide a consistent picture of the aircraft's environment. All sensors directly influence the main processors to support the fighter's mission. For example, the ANAP-81 works not only as a multi-mode radar, but also as part of the aircraft's electronic warfare system. All this flow of information is concentrated in a unique display design, in which the pilot's helmet is integrated. This is known as head-up display, and it refers to the multiple indicators and screens that keep the pilot fully informed about altitude, speed, wind incidents, and all kinds of relevant data. For its development, the various psychological reactions to sizes, colors, and sounds were taken into account. But all this deployment would not do much if the F-35 did not have considerable firepower. It has six underwing pylons, with a capacity of 6,800 kilograms and two internal bays with four pylons each with a total capacity of 8,100 kilograms to load a combination of paveway laser-guided bombs and satellite-guided bombs with the JDAM kit. In addition, it can operate missiles for combat beyond visual range and the future Spear 3 projectile that is still in development. The attack package is completed by a GAU-20 automatic 25mm machine gun. While we shouldn't judge a book by its cover, the F-35 cover is impressive. In its design, new processes were applied to the materials, in particular to titanium, which was cryogenized to improve its resistance and make it lighter. Other very abundant components are aluminum and carbon fiber. Currently, there are three different models, each with small variations. The F-35A is the standard, used by the United States Air Force. The F-35B has vertical landing and short takeoff capability similar to the British Harrier. Finally, the F-35C is intended for naval use with larger folding wings, which makes it more expensive than the other versions. Despite their differences, they share many of their characteristics. But as we anticipated, the life of the F-35 has not been a smooth ride, it has been the subject of several questions for overpricing and failed tests. Before we continue, do you think the F-35 will be as successful and used as the F-22 Raptor or the F-A-18? Leave your answer in the comments. For each unit of the F-35, the United States pays between $77 and $95 million, not counting the thousands of bills already destined for the production and refinement of technology. This is added to the cost of flying, which is around $50,000 per hour which triples the expense of other similar ships. Of course, good things are always expensive, but this budget barrier was one of the main problems, although not the only one. We also told you that there are three variants of the F-35 and that caused several complications during the first tests, units that didn't take off, speed failures and even a Lightning II that fell from an aircraft carrier. The reason is that the United States opted to unify the projects of all its forces instead of developing three different ships. Today each version of the F-35 is perfectly adapted to its use, but in its early stages poor planning was revealed when running the program. 
Unlike other comparable aircraft, the F-35 has already seen action in the Middle East at the hands of Israel, the main user after the United States. What the papers promised was confirmed by the amazing performance of the plane. While the J-20 and Su-57 outperform it in theory, it's hard to assess them without seeing them in action. At the moment, the Lightning II is postulated as the next king of the skies. Thanks for joining us until the end and stay tuned for our next video.